Lion FM WROI. We're joined by John Alley. It's the John and John Show. <laughs> oh, I can't get any better than this. Exactly, right? Exactly. So don't change the station. John, of course, is the CEO of Woodlawn Hospital. John, good morning. Good morning. Pleasure to be here. Pleasure to have you. And we are talking about a 2019 recap. So what do we need to know? Yeah, kind of did a recap. Uh, you know, we're looking at the December financials. So that's kind of the, you know, the end of last fiscal year for us. And, and as we're looking to 2020. So we kind of went back and, you know, recognized... Was it a good year? No, it wasn't. Um, but we know what caused that issue. We kind of discussed that a little bit last month of, you know, where we're at with our employee health benefits and how that was really devastating to several members of our staff, but also because we're self-funded, fairly devastating to the hospital. So it put us in a pretty deep hole mm -hmm. that we just never was able to recover from an operational perspective. So we did op have an operational loss, $2 million plus dollars last wow. year, uh, which is painful, we, you know, because we... We need that money, the operational funds, to put back into the hospital, and that's what we use for improvements and, and as we move forward. So hoping this year we had everybody healthy and uh, we don't have that issue that we have to deal yeah, with. Absolutely. You know, and, and I know as well you mentioned that $2 million, uh, is, is the mark in terms of a loss, and obviously that's a, that's a big number. Um, anytime you deal with that sort of issue or, I guess, shortcoming, if you will, there's some sort of resolution. Is there anything you guys are spitballing in terms of ideas of how to change it? You know, one of the things that, uh, unfortunately, we're in that area when we look at our what's called our tertiary referral centers, which is if somebody is sick enough that we really can't get them where they need to be and we feel they need to go to a higher level of care, we look to South Bend, Fort Wayne, because that's, you know, nice and close. Families, nice and close for them. Unfortunately, South Bend and Fort Wayne is the two highest cost centers in the state of Indiana for health care. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing I can do about that. So, you know, what we want to make sure is, yeah, our folks get to that appropriate spot. And, you know, a lot of this was in Fort Wayne. They need either cardiac or something along that line. So that's where they have to go. So it's just... You know, can we do something as we look at lifestyle changes? Because, you know, a cardiac issue is, is again, is not something that just pops up all of a sudden. Most of it has started at it some point, up. and it just starts building up. And you can feel fine for, you know, two or three years, and all of a sudden you have that, oh, something doesn't feel right. And all of a sudden realize it's a major cardiac issue. So, you know, we're looking this year, can we do some wellness, some health and wellness issues where we maybe preventative medicine? Can we get ahead of this with some of our employees? and make them, you know, a little healthier to start with to prevent some of these catastrophic yeah. claims that we've had. And it's just, it's hard because we all are creatures of habit. We, you know, we got to exercise more. We got to, you know, eat less fatty foods. We got to stop smoking. Everything we really enjoy doing, we got to stop <laughs> it's doing. It's bad for us. It's yeah. bad for us. So, you know, we're, we're changing culture yeah. and lifestyles. But I am hoping that we can do that and start making incremental gains in this chip away at it and, and get those folks that are that healthy yeah. mindset and avoid this as we move into the future. And drink plenty of milk. Build those strong bones. Yes. That'll help. Yeah. That'll, you that, know, that's, that that's, will. that's my two cents, but clearly I'm no doctor. Uh, again, we're yeah. joined by John Alley, CEO of Woodlawn. Uh, talking 2019 recaps. Is there anything else you need to hit on in terms of 2019? Some some big news? From, yeah, from not really. Year? You know, we sure. kind of went over our December financials and it was a, you know, was a positive month, but too little, too late. Yeah. Um, you know, we had gross revenue Revenue, just a little over $13 million is what we build out. We write off 61% of that, almost $8 million, and that's due to our contractual relationships. So, you know, high cost of health care, absolutely. But when you're we're one of the few businesses where, you know, I bill you a dollar and you pay me 40 cents and I say thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just that's basically how what we operate on. So it's it's tough as we try to, you know, manage those contracts and try to get better arrangements with some of our third party payers. Uh, so it left us an operating revenue to to work with, uh, kind of money in the checkbook, about five point two million. And we spent four point nine million of that. So we actually had a positive month from an Good. operations, almost two hundred fifty thousand dollar positive uh, dollar amount there. Non operating, which is we segregate out those things that are not direct patient care. So we had about 293000 of non-operating revenue. So we actually was able to post a $542,000 net income for the month of December. Helped a little bit, but didn't erase that whole $2 million. So it was, it's a good indication that, okay, maybe things have turned a little bit. We're moving down that path where we can keep an operational profit as we move through 2020. Because sure. that's our goal. We, we want to 
be profitable from our operations. And, uh, you know, it's just tough to do anymore. We're under constant pressure from, you know, government agencies, you know, pay less, pay less, do more. Um, new equipment is just astronomical when you start thinking, you know, we had a presentation for just a little small piece of equipment. You know, it's ninety thousand dollars. So, uh, you know, the stuff's not cheap. But again, when you look what we're using it for, trying to make folks well here. You know, diagnostic tools. What is wrong with them? And, and get that proper tools in here. It's expensive, but it's you know, it's what we do. It's what we have to do. So we got to make this work. Mm-hmm. Figure out how to get that operational profit as we move through twenty twenty. Sure. Sure, absolutely. So, again, that's the 2019 recap. Uh, yes. Let's jump and talk about some of the directors and the presentations they gave as well. What, yeah, what yesterday, you see uh, Becky Kopka, who is our director of our surgery department, came to the board, and it's called Power Equipment. Now, you know, I thought we could go to Sears and get some of these. or drills and stuff. <laughs> but it's basically some of the tools that is used by our orthopedic surgeons. And, sure. you know, again, highly specialized tools. What we've had is just they've served us well, but they wore out. And we can usually get three to four years out of what we call our power equipment. And we've gotten three and a half out of our current, so we look to replace those. So we uh, actually brought some samples in so the board could see what we're talking about. Uh, one of the things that we require our directors to get three bids. So we looked at three different companies. Over the past two to three months, they've actually brought test units in that our surgeons could use. Do you like this one? Do you like that one? And uh, they narrowed it down fairly quickly. Uh, you know, their preference was a company called ConMed uh, that had the power equipment that m- they really liked. Uh, you know, it fit their hands nice, and it was very durable. And, and uh, so we did approve that. The board approved to go with that. And, again, it was two small trays, and it was $100,000. So, you know, it's not cheap. But, again, surgeons, are, I think, uh, really like how this works. So if that makes them happy... Of course, then patient outcomes are improved also. So Mm -hmm. did approve that. We did have uh, a couple directors come in on stuff that was bought six months ago. One of the things we want our directors to do, they come in to the board and say, I need this new whatever, and it's going to do this, this, and this. We want to come back six months later and say, okay, you told us it's going to perform. What Mm -hmm. has it actually done? Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that what we're saying initially, we do follow through with. And at that end of that six-month period, come back to the board and said, yes, it did what I said it was going to do. So we had um, uh, Jim Truman, who's our director of materials, came in and uh, we got Dr. Wall, who is an ENT. So we had an ENT when I first came to the Woodlawn 15 years ago. They were about a year and, and gone. So that was a book of business that was being outsourced. It was requiring our patients to drive Fort Wayne, Indianapolis, South Bend, for, you know, take their kids for their tonsils and adenoids and ear tubes, stuff like that. So he's able to get uh, an ENT come in, and he's here two weeks, and then he goes back home for two weeks. So he's mm-hmm. right now just basically a half time. Mm-hmm. But we bought a lot of equipment and stuff, and just how's that going? And uh, understand is he started in Jan- 1st of January, so he's only been here two weeks. But it's just been phenomenal the amount of business that we've seen because folks don't want to drive to take their kids, you know, to uh, someplace else. So, Mm -hmm. you know, he's been real busy. The power equipment that he uses, again, very specialized equipment, he says works fine. He Mm -hmm. just, you know, loves being here. He's from California, so he's still adjusting to (laughs) snow and cold. Um, But uh, I said, get a heavier coat. And the first coat he had, I said, it's not going to work. Yeah. So, uh, you know, he's he's back in California. I think he'll be back Monday. Uh, yeah, hopefully this, he'll bring a warmer this, jacket. This is shorts and t-shirt weather yes, for us that are to used to it. to him, I said, you know, <laughs> basically this is balmy weather we're having today. So uh, he's adjusted <laughs> that. But just an outstanding gentleman. Everybody has come in contact with, loves him. Patience, I, all I'm getting is phone calls. That, oh, my gosh, where's this guy been? Mm-hmm. Uh, very kind Good. and caring. So we're really proud to have him here and, and glad. And we've got, you know, so basically a one-year contract to make sure that this program's going to work. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, right now I, it's very successful. Sure. And then the other one was uh, called a C-arm, and it's a specialized radiology piece of equipment that's used in surgery. So as a surgeon's doing a case, basically they this goes around the table, looks like a big C, and then they can visualize what's happening. Uh, you wouldn't think it'd make a big difference. The one we had before had a 9-inch receptor on it. Mm-hmm. Well, we went to a 12-inch. Mm-hmm. So, you know, oh, that's not that much bigger. But from the surgeon, that increases their field of view when they're doing a surgery dramatically. So uh, Dr. Sheedy uses that when he does his anterior hips. Before, he'd have to move the machine around to visualize what he needed to see. Now he doesn't have to. He can place the machine and he can see the whole area that he's working on. That's fantastic. So it's just, you know, he just said, oh, I guess 
why couldn't we have done this five years ago? <laughs> so again, what we're finding is, you know, we are making these these purchases, and, and yes, they're expensive, but from a patient satisfaction, from a physician satisfaction, we're making the right purchases yeah. and meeting their needs and helping, you know, make sure that we have a very good outcome when we do our surgery. So yeah. that was kind of the day yesterday, sure. just kind of going over those things, what we've done, uh, we're kind of looking to the future, what do we want to do? And, uh, you know, that's part of our strategic planning that we have to say, Based on what we know today, we're going to be two years, three years down the road. So mm-hmm. we're starting to put some of that stuff together. Uh, I've got a lot of a lot of plans going on, big things I, we're hoping is going to work out. Uh, know. You know, probably the biggest thing, uh, and, and some folks have already, you know, we've talked a little bit about it. We're actually looking at a Da Vinci robot for our surgery department. So what exactly is a Da Vinci robot? It what is does that a, do? a fantastic piece of equipment. <laughs> um, basically, it's, you, it's assisting in laparoscopic surgery. So, again... A surgeon can have much finer detail. Uh, when you look through the view field, you get a 10x magnification of what you're working on. And the scary part is they had a, a simulator there where I sit down and did a hernia repair in about 20 minutes. Oh, now, wow. It took me about five minutes to figure out how this thing works. Now, you wouldn't want me to do it. The, the cut was really jagged. But it was amazed to me that within, you know, just a few minutes of training, uh, I was able to manipulate this this robot and do a, a surgery. So, that's fantastic. you know, we're looking to that, uh, you know, that that is a, a, another huge investment, ch- huge change in our culture of where we want to be. But, uh, and, you know, I, we're, we're trying to work all those details out, and I fairly confident we're probably 80 percent there saying yeah i think we're going to do this cool i got a few more numbers i want to put together what i like to do is sit down and say okay if we do this what's my return on this investment Mm -hmm. and i like to have a 30 month or less return on my investment so if i'm spending you know a million dollars i want to get that money back in you know 30 months or less right now it appears on this one i I can get even better than that i'm looking maybe an 18 to 24 month wow payback on this piece of equipment so you know it makes sense to do it but again the component is you know dr cly is our OBGYN. he's the primary user of this equipment so we're negotiating with him too because right now we've got what's called a locums contract with him so he's here for six months kind of test driving us we're test driving him so Again, a lot of things have to go in place, but we're moving forward. I think we're going to be successful, but again, I want to make sure it's the right thing for our organization. Because, yeah. again, big investment, but I think long-term, it's going to pay off. Absolutely. Yeah, you, you mentioned the new equipment, and it sounds like it's going to pay dividends down the road. It does. Uh, you mentioned that C-arm. Now, is that different from the glide scope? What, what, what is the glide scope? Right, that's the glide scope, uh, if, it was what we actually had our, the foundation had their gala for, and that's what the... Proceeds went to purchase that. And what that is, is basically, if we're having a difficult time with an anesthesia provider in surgery, getting an airway established with a patient, and lots of times, you know, uh, very muscular people has got thick necks and stuff, it's kind of hard really to see the vocal cords. What this allows them is actually a camera on the end of of a tube that allows them to guide the intubation tube through the vocal cords so we get a, a proper airway. And, uh, you know, with that is in place. And, you know, again, anesthesia providers say, oh, my gosh, it just makes it so much easier. You know, you, you see on television where they got like, somebody's holding a flashlight and they're trying to tip the head back. And, they're, yeah. you know, this is all built in one. So basically one person can do this very smoothly, very, very safely. That's the key. It's a safe way to intubate a person uh, during a surgical procedure. Yeah, absolutely. Again, John Alley, CEO of Woodlawn Hospital, joins us this morning here on Giant FM. John, I've asked all my questions. You got any final words of wisdom you can impart on us? The biggest thing I can say right now is flu is upon us. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Hand sanitizer. Wash your hands. <laughs> I mean, that, that's right now because it, it is a you know it's transmitted uh, via droplets. So if somebody sneezes or coughs. You know, you know, cover your cough. If you're around somebody who's coughing, those droplets become airborne and they drop on surfaces. If you touch it and touch your nose or your face, you're going to get it. So, mm-hmm. again, seeing a lot of flu right now. Um, protect yourself. If you haven't had the flu shot, you can still get it. Mm-hmm. It's not too late. Sure. But, you know, just hand sanitizing is the biggest thing. Keep your hands clean. You know, if you touch surfaces, clean your doorknobs, stairwells, you know, the mm-hmm. hand railings. You'd just be surprised because when you think about it, we all grab a handrail when we're going down a stairway. If I've just coughed, guess where my hand goes? Yep. Where's all those germs? Ugh. They're on there. <laughs> uh, you know, the other big thing I, I tell people, 
and it's you know sounds terrible, but restaurants, menus, salt and pepper shakers, condiments, you know, carry a hand sanitizer with you, mm-hmm. you know, put the stuff on your food, hand sanitized before you pick it up and start eating. It's just best way to prevent the the flu right now is just be very cautious. You know, I say don't trust anybody with a cough right now. Assume they've got the flu. <laughs> sure. Sure. John, as always, appreciate you stopping by. My pleasure. Thank you. Again, that's John Alley, CEO of Woodlawn Hospital. Kind enough to join us this morning on Giant FM WROI.